Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar from Pharma Growth Hub and in today's video we are going to talk about the new draft guideline of the method validation. Yes, now this is the method validation guideline you can see on the screen and this is the second version of this uh, validation guideline and there are very interesting changes ICH has made and this guideline is not yet uh, you know uh, finalized but it is under the public consultation so let us understand and discuss today what is the change ICH has uh, proposed for the method specificity parameter so I am going to make videos on each and every parameter and as a part of today's video let us talk about the specificity part okay so we are on the page number seven uh, of the draft guideline and you can see a parameter which is the specificity 4.1 the first change you must have noticed in defining the term itself if you refer old or the current guideline not the old one but the current guideline that is a q2 r1 version you will find term which is specificity so ich has now included uh, this change which is very important according to me rather than saying specificity ICH is mentioning this parameter as a specificity or selectivity now if you refer the uh, ISO uh, as far as the selectivity definition and the specificity definition you will understand why ICH must have done this change so what is mean by specificity if your analytical procedure is let us say HPLC and there are three important analyte that you want to analyze so if you prove that these three analytes are only eluting at their respective retention time and there is nothing getting eluted at their retention time then your method is called as the specific now i will explain further what is the real difficulty in proving the specificity now this is a drug product that you are analyzing and that drug product also contain the sample matrix excipients which are also part of your test solution now this excipient may not give the response to your detection technique let us say by a UV detector so that though they are getting eluted let us say at the same retention time of those three important analytes your detector your detector will not recognize them but that doesn't mean they are absent into the chromatographic run they are very much present it's the detectors inability to detect them and provide the response now in this situation in this situation you cannot say my method is a specific in the nature because there are excipients eluting at the same retention time it's only because they are not getting detected because of the incapability of the detector and this proves method is non-specific now what is the another word which is very important that is selectivity now what is selectivity means okay let me there these excipients get elute at the same retention time of my analyte but are they interfering are they giving any trouble during quantification or the uh, identification of my analyte and the way i explained you know how these excipients are not giving response to the detection technique they are not going to make any kind of interference and hence i will say okay now i have a selective method why selective because the analytes can get quantified can get can be identified without any interference from the sample matrix so this is the difference between the specificity and the selectivity so let us now begin with the discussion on this one parameter how this parameter can be proved according to the draft version of the ICH guideline 
the specificity of or selectivity of an analytical procedure can be demonstrated through absence of interference comparison of result of an orthogonal procedure or may be inherently given by the underlying scientific principle of the analytical procedures so there are three which ICH has provided to prove whether my method is specific or selective. The first one is the absence of interference. This is the point that you can use to prove the method specificity. The second one is by using the orthogonal approach of the test procedure. And the third one is by technical, scientific, rational according to the technique that you are using. That is technology inherent justification. <clears throat> Selectivity could be demonstrated when the analytical procedure is not specific. Now this statement is very important and this justifies why ICH has adopted the term the selectivity. The selectivity could be demonstrated when the analytical procedure is not specific. And I explained to you what is meant by specificity of analytical procedures. However, the test for analyte to be identified or quantified in the presence of potential interference should minimize that interference and prove that the test is fit for purpose. So we are trying to understand if there is a presence of sample matrix, there may be evolution or the co-evolution of the excipients along with my interested analyze, but how it is not interfering in their identification and the quantification is the, is the, uh, the probability of proving why my method is selective in the nature, even though it is not a specific in the nature. So when one <clears throat> analytical procedure does not provide sufficient discrimination a combination of two or more procedures is recommended to achieve the necessary level of selectivity so you can use multiple test procedures to justify and prove why the earlier method or selective or specific in the nature let us understand the three different approaches ICH has proposed in the draft guideline the first one is absence of interference. So the specificity or selectivity can be shown by demonstrating that the identification and or quantification of an analyte is not impacted by the presence of other substances, not impacted by the presence of other substances. Now here it is very important that though they are present into the sample, but how they are not impacting, how they are not impacting on the intended purpose of the analytical procedures and what are the substances? The other substances can be impurities, they can be a degradation product, they can be a related substances or matrix or other component present in the operating environment. So you run the system, HPLC system, if you have the HPLC test procedure, and prove that even though the substances are present, maybe they are well dissolving for, from each other with the resolution and you can justify why they are not interfering, why there is an absence of interference. Or in case if they are eluting along with the principal peak but they are not responding to the detection technique and hence they are not giving any interference, so there is absence of interference. The second technique of proving selectivity or specificity of analytical procedure is orthogonal procedure comparison. Now what is been by orthogonal test procedure? In case if you are using let us say H reverse space HPLC method for quantifying assay. You use very different uh, test procedure in terms of its selectivity. Maybe a normal phase chromatography where the selectivity completely get reversed from the reverse phase chromatography. And still you prove that how these results are comparable and there is no interference coming out of the sample matrix or the degradants or the impurities. Your orthogonal method must be a monograph method or earlier validated test procedure. Otherwise you cannot compare the test result between these two methods. So the specificity 
or selectivity can be verified by demonstrating that the measured results of analyte is comparable up to the measured result of a second well characterized analytical procedure example orthogonal procedure now this well categorized word needs to be further well understood right it must be validated test procedure otherwise we cannot ascertain the result generated by the second procedure so generate the result by second procedure which is called as orthogonal test procedure now and then compare the result how much assay value you got how much resolution you got between these two procedures and if the results are comparable at least for the quantification the content of assay then you can say yes my method under validation meets the uh, requirement of the specificity or selectivity uh, and that stands valid the last point that is the technology inherent justification in some cases where the specificity of the analytical technology can be ensured and predicted by technical parameters example resolution of isotopes isotopes in mass spectrometry or chemical shift in case of nmr signal no experimental study may be required if justified now these are the fundamental techniques like mass spectroscopy or nmr and the shift into the the chemical shift of the signals provide that this is something a different uh, compound in case if it is ms spectroscopy and if you prove that the two isotopes are well resolved then there is no further necessity to probe and prove why there is a absence of interference or why my method is specific in the nature so this fundamental tools itself sufficient to justify and prove that your method is specific or selective in the nature so this is the first parameter that is the specificity or selectivity in the upcoming videos i am also going to talk about rest other parameters thank you so much